So I've made all the mistakes you can make. My headlamp stopped working in the middle of the night and we run through snow and fog and storms and rain and it just gets really cold really quickly. Hi guys, my name is Mimi Kotka and I'm an ultra trail runner on the crop team. I'm going to be talking a bit about gears for UTMB. So we start with the most important thing, the shoes. You need to find a model that's right for you, but for this kind of long races, most people run in a bit of a heavier shoe with a bit more cushioning. It's good to have a model that you've been running, logging a lot of miles in, so you feel comfortable. And also a shoe that's suitable for the terrain, for example, UTMB, for many people, quite a technical race, so you need good grip. Because it's a long race, you need to be able to run for a really long time in the shoes. And also, if you have a lot of ascent and descent up and down, as in this race, you need to have a shoe that's good for that as well. So just find the model that's right for you. Maybe for some people it makes sense as well to perhaps switch up halfway or something. That's not the way I do it. I like to use one model for the whole race, but maybe you can have two pairs of shoes and change along the way and so on. And as for socks, I always go for wool socks because it keeps the feet cool and warm, independent of the weather. It's very typical for ultra races and long races that small little details mismanaged or that hasn't been planned for can turn into bigger disasters than they have to be. For these kind of races, it, it almost feels like the more you plan, the better, and then things don't go to plan, but at least like being on top of details can really save you a lot of trouble. The next important thing, of course, is the race vest. We have a bunch of stuff to carry in a race of this sort, and I use a vest with a lot of carrying capacity in the front. And this is something that is very handy for most people because you want to be able to have easy access, especially to your nutrition and fluids, because it's very important to remember to stay on top of hydration and the eating during a race that's this long. You need to practice racing with a vest because when this one is loaded up, it's actually quite heavy. And next up on the very important list is the headlamp. UTMB starts at 6 o'clock in the evening and you run through a whole night in the beginning of the race. You have some technical parts during the night as well when you run through pyramids. So for me, it's like you can go super light on the headlamp, but for me, it's a no-brainer to bring heavier battery packs and extra batteries and see more. So next thing are poles. In a race like UTMB, most runners will use poles because it's such a long race with so much vertical meters up and down. You can actually save the legs a bit by using poles in the uphills. And if you're in a really bad spot, you might use them in the downhill in the end as well. But let's just hope that doesn't happen. You need to practice good, good technique with your poles and make sure you have actually spent some time using them, folding them. And I run with super lightweight ones. Sometimes I don't even fold them. I just find the balancing point and just run with them in my hands. And I would use poles in all the apples in a race like UTMB, from the first one to the last one. And then, of course, I have to mention the anti-chafing stuff. Please use this deliberately. <laughs> I usually smear this anti-chafing cream on my feet and on all the places where you get chafing. And it's the like first layer of defense against blisters and stuff. It's almost like my pre-race ritual. Put it everywhere, please. <laughs> One thing that's important to think about when it comes to clothing is to actually take the time to make sure you don't get too cold, especially during the night, because it will sap a lot of energy out of you if you get like too cold. So make sure you have enough clothing. If it's cold up at altitude during the night and it's windy or even snowy, you will be very happy to have your warm extra layers. And so please take the time 
to actually put them on <laughs> because you don't want to be hypothermic during the night. That might destroy the race. Even if you feel fine during the night, it's still about conserving energy for the whole day ahead. You need to eat and be warm during the night. One of the mandatory equipments is to have a rain jacket that can really stand wind and rain. And I like to have a bigger size. If it's a warm night, I will just run in t-shirts and sleeves. But if it's a bit windy, I might have like a really thin wind jacket. But for the more heavy, bad weather, you use the rain jacket. And then I like to have a bigger size because I would normally just put that on top of my pack as well. So this was some of the gear stuff that I find most important, like making sure you're comfortable, making sure you're warming up, and making sure you can see in the dark. <laughs> see you.